Okay. So let's get started with this session, everybody. We're going to begin in a simple seat. Sukhasana. Word Dandasana. Straight legs. Or folded legs. If you have a blanket or a little cushion, you can sit on it and have your feet off it. So just find your way into a nice, comfortable, stable seat. And we'll get started. So as the sound of that bell fades, just begin to tune into the sensations in your body. Grounded through whatever's on the ground. Creating a nice balance between leaning left or leaning right, leaning forward or rounding back, just finding that middle path. Just feeling a sense of openness across the heart. A little relaxation across your shoulders. And an effort-free ascension through the crown of the head. Gently shift your awareness to your breathing. Feel a nice peaceful expansion on inhalation, taking in all that air. gentle release on exhalation. I'm just going to shift into a little pranayama practice here. So we're going to work with a very simple counting system, one that regulates inhalation and exhalation by evening the count. 
So we're going to just go with a four count. So in your own private space, and even in the privacy of your own mind, just count four on an inhalation. Count four on an exhalation. And repeat it a few times. Maybe a couple dozen. Just to clarify, we're working on a little balanced symmetrical pranayama, a four count inhalation, followed by a four count exhalation, repeated two dozen times. Hopefully falls in, in a sweet spot. In that, it does take a little bit of your attention. It might not be exactly what your breathing thermostat was set to before. But it's not too slow. It's not too fast. And it's even on both sides. Inhale and exhale. Maybe 10 more rounds, everybody. 4-4 four, four, Pranayama count. As you're ready, everybody, you can just start to drop the, the counting. And that rhythm might linger for a little while, or you might instantly change to a different one. Either, either way is fine. So what we're going to do next is just gently shift into a Virasana or Vajrasana. So the Virasana, technically you're usually sitting between your heels and the Vajrasana you're sitting on your heels. Either one's fine. You can also make use of a little blanket if your ankles need extra support. And if your knees don't like to flex this much, you could come up a little higher. So for about 10 breaths, you're just going to relax your fingers and your thumbs, but press with the palms. Keep the back of the neck nice and long. Lift up a little through the underside of the arms. Relax the back of the heart. Nice deep breaths across your upper back. Full inhalations that expand the side and back of your ribs. 
softening down through your low back, stretching through your glutes, just relaxing through the floor of the pelvis. Then we're going to reach both arms out. Like a T shape. This one's kind of new for Mustia. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to bend the right elbow. Bend the right elbow. Turn the head to the right. Turn the head to the right. Let the hips shift to the right. Oh, wow. So, if we're all together here, you've got your head turned right, your right elbow bent and lifted, your hips shifted off to the right here, and you can feel some stretch to the upper, outer, right side of your hip, to the side of your waist, up through your ribs, Maybe even through the neck. Whew. We're going to shift back to a neutral. And just try that one time on the new set. So you're going to turn your head to the left. Bend the left elbow. Shift the hips to the left. Trying to get a little stretch through the back of the left glute, upper outer, upper outer edge of the waist, on the side of the rib cage, all the way up through the neck. Let's come back to neutral. Goodness. One more from here. We're going to take the hands onto the tail, palms up, thumbs in, forearms and wrists flush to the back side. Then we're going to let the head release all the way down. Couple breaths here. Goodness. Next move, y'all, we're gonna come up to kneeling. It's gonna look like this. Excellent. So then once we've established that we're up at the top of this kneeling position on the knees, on the shins, on the top of the feet, let's finally relax the arms. Okay. So now that we've gone through that cycle, at least from down to up, now we'll go from up to down and, and back and forth a couple times. So it'll look like this. The arms start extended. The hips are in full extension. The glutes are kind of on for this part. And then as you hinge, the glutes turn off. We hinge from the hips, then we let back flexion happen, arms extend all the way backward, forehead releases down. Then using a lot of press from your hips, lift through the mid carriage, lift through the arms, chest and head, you get to the top, and then just relax into neutral for a moment. So next round, no relaxing into neutral. We'll just go up and down. So you reach up. And you sweep all the way backward. Release all the way downward. And then you rise back up. 
This time let's connect it to breathe in. We'll just try three or four more. On your next exhale, hinge down. And on your next inhale, sweep up. Exhale, hinge. Inhale, rise. Two more. Exhale, hinge. Inhale, rise. Last one. Exhale, hinge. Inhale, rise. Oh, goodness. And then let's slowly release all of that. Awesome. So then we're going to come to a extended leg seat, Dandasana, staff pose. All right, so here's the task. Any gap that's here between the toes, the big ones, fill the gap. So let the big toes touch and then let them be a little bit apart. So let's try that about 12 times. Woo. So as they come closer to each other, this is obvious as you look at your feet, uh, they're widening, right? They're going away from all their partner toes on that same foot. Last couple. We did this one a few weeks back, uh, standing, a little different here. And then release that, and then let's go with the little toes, and they go out, and out, and out. And you might get some spread from the other three toes there, but uh, mostly just taking the little toes out, neutral, out, neutral. Last few. Love waking up these feet. Okay. Then let's try to spread all toes and squeeze toes together. So wide toes, like spacers everywhere, and then narrow so no light gets through. Wide, narrow, wide, narrow, last couple, wide, narrow, wide, narrow, all right, awesome. So from here, y'all, we're going to bend the right knee, I'll get in. And then just lift and lower the straight opposite leg, left leg. Some of us just, you know, feel like maybe we're little workhorses on this and can do it for days. Others, this one sneaks up on you pretty quick and after 10, 12, 15 reps, you might have to tap out for a little while. Keep going if you can. Controlled little, little beats up and down. Last few. Ay, ay, ay. And then release it. Okay, let's switch legs. So this knee's pretty much locked out, so your quad's engaged. Obviously, you can't really do this exercise without it, but you're also engaging deep up into your midsection. Last few beats, up and down. Keep a pretty nice clip going, speed-wise. All right, and then release that. Next. I don't want to blanket under my head for this guy. You're going to come down onto uh, into a resting bridge position to get ready for an active bridge. So, 
Down we rest. And then we're going to lift up the hips. And then come down. You don't really have to tie to breathing, and it's more coincidental than planned, although that would, would have worked out well. You could tie it, I suppose. But try about a four-second lift and a four-second lower. So, rising for four and lowering for four. Try about ten more. One experiment you might perform, keep up with the 4 4 ratio approximately, is really thrust your long straight arms down into the floor. Feel your triceps work a little harder. Feel your arms cover a lot of surface area. It's almost like you're pulling them backward, it's just you're precluded from going beyond the floor. Last couple, four up, four down. Now let's add a four second pause at the top. So take about four seconds to get up. Hold it, and then take about four seconds to get down. Let's repeat that a few times. Approximately four seconds to rise up, four seconds to be at the top in the apex, really pulling the arms in the opposite direction of the hips, and four seconds to control your descent and if you wish you could even like put a little four second break at the bottom then we've really got a nice uh, four by four please repeat four up four to pause four to descent Maybe a four second pause at the bottom, optional. Last couple, everybody. Bridge and strong. On the next one, let's pause at the top. Right, everybody. Finally, down you come. And let's lift the left foot up like a tabletop shape. So you, you could make a little 90 degree marker back there. Let's keep the same active arm work so you're feeling your triceps engaged, keeping your arms fully extended, trying to thrust into the basement. Then we're going to try a few one-legged bridges, all right? So if you know you're not up for it, you could always go back to two. If you're not sure, definitely try it. So come on up. Come on down. And repeat. So you've you got options. If you can barely pull this off, just do whatever you can. Lift, lower. Lift, lower. If you can pull it off with some a plume and you've got some spare strength, maybe do four up, 
four down, reconnect to that last pattern. Maybe even four up, four pause, four down, last couple one-legged bridges. Oh, yeah. And finally, okay, let's switch legs. So level one, just do what you can. Little bridge, any amount of time on one leg. Level two, try to take that full four seconds to ascend, full four seconds to descend. Advanced level, now four seconds up, four second hold, four seconds down. Last one or two one-legged bridges, we're almost done. Good work, everybody. One last set, moving in a different direction. You're gonna walk the feet forward. Dorsiflex the feet, the opposite of pointing, dorsiflex. The beds of your toenails come back to your shins. Feel your hamstrings really get strong and active. Then pry up your hips. And let's end with a little bit of bridge marching. So I've altered the arm shape a little bit, so I'm, now I'm pulling just bent arms to the floor. I've altered the foot shape quite a bit. Only a heel to press down. Last few steps. And then let's come on down. Nice work, everybody. Let's rock on up to a seat. That was good. All right. Water break. We're going to come all the way up. Hopefully your legs are feeling good from that. My hips and glutes feel yeah, kind of ready to roll. Um, we did that quad work too, so great. All that work done on the feet. So, we're gonna reach out through the right arm. Been one of my favorite lately. Turn up the palm. Gently let the head release in the direction of the palm. Just can't get enough of this one. And then slowly let your head release away as you kind of fold the arm in and out. Just try a couple times back and forth. So your head releases toward open left arm, or right, whichever way you started. And then your head falls away from that arm as it folds in and out. Last couple. Same side, just one slight modification. Take the hand that's been extended out and put it in a little peace sign mudra. So you're pinning down two fingers, pulling up the rabbit ears, trying to pull the nail beds of your fingers back towards your elbow, and then let your head either turn or tilt. I think you get more from the tilt but turn or tilt away from that seam. So last couple breaths here. I'm trying to actively pull your bunny ears back towards your elbow. I'm trying to press out with the rest of the arm and tilting away. 
Ay, 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 that's warm. And then release that. Please switch. All right, so first round, we've got the supinated hand. Like you can hold a bowl of soup on it. Let the head fall in its direction. And then as though you were setting that soup on your shoulder, let your head tilt away. And toward elbow. Oh, head away. Toward elbow. One more like that. Then the last one, you make that peace sign, the mudra. Reach it. So the whole arm is reached away from the rib cage, except those two fingers. They're pulling back as much as possible. And then the head can either turn, but I think it's a little juicier if you tilt away from that seam. Everybody, let's release that. Shake it out a little bit. Okay, one more little shoulder release here. So we're gonna come over into a hip hinge. Gonna let the arm hang in the most relaxed fashion possible. So one you want is to just kind of like hang straight down from the shoulder socket. Hence the attempt to try to get a tabletop here. And with the arm just in relaxed mode. Oh my goodness. You're just circle. Maybe the circle's as big as your mat. Maybe it's a little smaller. It should be a little bigger than the shoulder itself. I know there's got to be some exertion of energy to get the circle started, but as little as possible, just kind of let it relax and almost just hang. And then circle the opposite direction. Now your legs might be cooking from holding me in this tabletop, but the arm should be really relaxed and like loose. Okay, last little bit. We're stirring the pot with as little muscular effort as possible. Letting the shoulder literally, sorry, letting the arm literally just hang straight out of the shoulder. So, last go around, circling the opposite direction in this second one. I can feel myself, I got tighter on this side. I'm muscling it. That first side, I really felt loosey-goosey. Feels different. Okay. And then finally, everybody, let's release that and come back up to standing. So I'm assuming since most of you are indoors, maybe you're on a little outdoor perch like this, you have access to a wall. So I would like you all to find a wall. If your feet are in danger of slipping, Obviously, slide your mat over. Assuming it's a good sticky mat and not going to slip itself. Oh, that is better. You see why people use yoga mats. And let's camp out for a little while. So the more conservative approach here um, hips higher than knees. A little juicier if you want to get in there, a little deeper. Whoo, yeah, that cooks. Hips uh, about level to knees. 
it's a perfect opportunity in the squatting situation to have your knees above your heels or in my situation they're actually slightly even behind the heels so that would put me in a condition where if i did this without the wall i'd probably fall on my ass because there's just too much weight going backward but with the wall you can kind of lean into that i'm also trying to cue my knees slightly out toward the littlest toes now you can always come up like this not that I needed a break, I just wanted to show you the option. Okay, no, I'm kidding, my legs were cooking. Um, but you can take a break anytime you want. You can also stay in it for as long as you want. Songs break, and we'll be here for about another minute. So in the last minute, if you're up for a little more challenge, reach the arms forward into fists, right out in front of your shoulders. That same type of loose, soft, relaxed exercise we did with the shoulders a second ago, now it's strong. Now your arms are plugged into their sockets. Now you're holding the weight of the arms instead of releasing. Now you're circling the arms. Again, about as big as the shoulders or a little bigger. <sighs> Lastly, let's circle the opposite direction. We share similar legs, then we're going through a similar experience. They're cooking. And last, everybody, pull the elbows into the wall. Draw the head into the wall. Lengthen up through the back of the neck. Okay. And then finally, let's get up and out of there. Nice work. That was great. So one more move here at the wall. Since we've all made our way. Now this could be a little awkward if you've got, you know, a lot of stuff hanging on the wall. I get it. But if you can, you're going to press your hands up the wall. We're going to lean the hips a little bit toward the wall. But keep some structure in your belly at the same time. So the belly is almost pulling slightly away from the wall. The hips are drawing slightly toward the wall. And I'm going to lift up one leg. And switch. And just go back and forth. So as you're driving one hip up, you're, I mean, by definition, driving the opposite hip down by keeping it pushed into the floor. Last cup, and we'll add one more feature. The next time your right knee is lifted, hold and lift your left heel. And left heel down, right foot down, switch. Drive up a hip, float up a heel, sustain it, and down you come. Last few times back and forth, everybody. So you're controlling it one step at a time. Hip, heel, heel, hip, hip. Heel, heel, hip. Last couple goes. Awesome. And then let's release all of that. Nice, everybody. Okay, next. We're going to do some hip hinges, but on only one leg. 
in the bodylifting, weightlifting world, this goes by the pretty cool name of Romanian deadlift. But also pretty cool name in, in the yoga world, Warrior 3, Vita Bhadrasana 3. So, you're just hinging from your hip and coming back up. You're trying to keep your hips pretty much square and level. So both of my hands would point down. You're trying to keep your toes straight ahead on the standing leg, straight down on the lifted leg. And you're imagining your spine incapable of making any adjustments. So that the pose essentially comes from only the hip hinge. You can change to arms out in front. We have to change to just one arm out in front. I mean, in, in the most casual setting, this could be sort of like fetching a golf ball from the hole. Got to get down there and get it somehow. Or obviously you could not golf, but you know what I mean in the analogy. One more time, warrior three. Okay. And then we change sets. So you can do hands on the hips and help kind of guide that square hip scene. You can do it where each time you're really trying to reinforce I can notice my toes are a little extra pointed out, so I'm gonna really try to point those back toes down. Just gonna make it more likely the hip stays level. You could let the arms come forward. Or you can just do the one arm. Again, like you're grabbing the ball out of the hole. Last cup. Hinge in. So you're about parallel. Last one. All right. Nice, everybody. Next. Oh, man. Are you up to go back to the wall one more time? Um, I really do want to get this in. Especially after what we just did. So, we're going to hold the wall, and we're going to come into Virasana. So a one-legged bow pose, half of a Virasana. So here's the key little ingredient for this one. We're going to try to do it with flexion in the back, so we're rounded, and we're going to try to do it with the butt squeezed. So you squeeze your butt. Round your back a little. Oh. Then what you might find, if you're anything like me in this situation, this leg, it really just kind of goes nowhere. But that's obviously not true. It goes right here. It just doesn't go very far back. Maybe yesterday, or maybe if I didn't do this more often, it would be way out here. So, to clarify, you've got super strong locked out glutes, a little flexion in your back, and yet you're still trying to draw this dude, this fine thigh, backward. Okay, and then let's release. I just really wanted to take balance out of the picture so we can just really focus in on that, hence the wall. One time opposite side. So I'm holding the wall just for balance, flexed in the body, round, strong, squeezed in the butt, tight, active. And letting that thigh release back in the mouth. Squeezing through your glutes. Keep a little tension in your belly. Oh my gosh, that feels good. 
Um, but still try to let that thigh reach backward. Last couple breaths here. Gosh, that feels good. And then when you're ready, everybody release that. Oh, yeah. Happy, happy hips. So, I don't know how everybody feels about this guy with your walls at home, but since you've already been reaching up them, leaning on them, pawing them, maybe we can just take this one last step. So perhaps before you situate, take a look at the two set of options here. Option number one, if you can find your way to a door frame, oh my goodness, uh, that's payoff number one. That way you get one straight, one vertical leg, one horizontal leg, one along the flow, one along the wall. If you're not near a door frame and you've just got a wall, then obviously you're gonna just stick with this one. Okay. So why don't you all find your way to either a two-legged situation where both legs are up a single wall or pick a side, we'll switch and run one leg long along the floor as the opposite leg runs long up the wall. Should feel just fabulous. Oh my gosh. Then, to further complicate matters, and just to take the stretch a little further, we're going to reach the arms up, turn the thumbs out, Extend the palms backward so the nail beds pull back toward the floor. Tuck your chin so the back of your neck stays long. Tuck your tail slightly under toward the wall, but without totally rounding your back. Just kind of put a little traction in it. And then any amount the shoulders allow for, let those arms go all the way overhead. And at any point, you can come out of any element of the pose. So maybe the arm thing's too intense, let them relax. Maybe this angle of the leg is a little too trying for your hamstrings. You could move uh, back a little further. Keeping the same leg arrangement everybody's working with. Let the arms relax down along your side. All right. And again, I realize this could be complicated, but here's the option. You can either switch legs if you've been one-legged, or you're just gonna stay in that pose if you've been two-legged. All right. Oh, yes. So, that worked out well for me. Um, So I know some of you got to run to like the opposite side of the doorway to get it done. It just worked out for me right here to stay in frame. And just as a point of reference, I feel like we've really sped through this guy. Feel free when we're done with the session. Tomorrow sometime. Any day from here on out. Clock, of, clock a little time in this one. It's awesome. So let me just make sure we go through one more time 
the way to juice it up here. So you're still in a two-legged version of the wall for some, and for everybody else, we're on the new side, one leg. Thrust the arms toward the sky ceiling. Spin out your thumbs. Pull back the hands. Tuck the chin. And reach the arms overhead. That is muy fabuloso right there. Slowly release out of that. And then we'll gently extract ourselves from the wall. So wherever you were in that scenario there, one or two legs up the wall, they're, they're both great poses. So to transition, We're going to come to rest on our back. I would recommend just going onto the floor rather than legs up the wall, just for now. And please come to rest on, on your back. We're going to let the legs extend out. Let the arms open out to the side, letting the fingers and the hands relax. Just allowing relaxation everywhere. Encouraging the mind to just be very open and spacious. Neither grasping nor, nor pushing away. Just taking all the sounds. The sounds that come to you through, through the airwaves here. Literally, you can hear the air here in Long Beach but all the ambient noises all around you. And everybody, we're just gonna spend a few minutes here in Shavasana.
Just begin to reconnect to your breath. Let it move at any speed, any any degree of sound, any way you like. So a few cathartic breaths, a few ah breaths, just nice and easy silent breaths, and making your way, everybody. Let's uh, transition back up to a comfortable seat. Join the palms together and find a spot for the hands to rest at the breastbone. And let's just one more time reconnect to that breathing. So I'm not going to go on for much longer. But obviously the breath is one of the central elements of the yoga practice, the asana being kind of bullseye for modern style yoga. Um, and we use the breath as the object of meditation, but then we also use the breath as a, just a practice unto itself. So tonight's opening practice, once we got it going, was a very middle of the road, almost always appropriate, kind of like drinking water, well-modulated form of breathing. If we're going to lean into breathing practices that are more down-regulating, slower, we, we'd probably stretch the breath out a little bit longer. I'd say we'd at least work on extending the exhale a little longer. Uh, and there again, if we were going to try to do more stimulating breathing, it might be <laughs> Kapalabhati and go in a very different direction in terms of rhythm and and sound and intensity and, and what it does for the nervous system. So all that said, not that you couldn't remember, but let's just go back to one last wrap up. Four rounds only. Four in, four out. So let's start. And just count to yourself. And finally, send a little, a little private thanks out to everybody else gathering here in this virtual space. I thank you so much for being here and uh, for the continued support. Namaste.